Because you demanded it, more family reviews of Mighty Marvel Masterworks with the Junior Mints. It's Doctor Strange. Dude, that was, that's my line. Why did you take it? So stay tuned. Welcome back, everybody. It's us, the Junior Mints, Miss Lydia. And astonishing Alicia. No, you're not. No, you're adjectiveless. <laughs> <laughs> Have you, like, not done this for Aww, so long? You, uh, no, I'm astonishing. Uh, you could take over your mom's adjective. <laughs> I don't care. Uh, we are back doing the family reviews. Today we're talking about the Mighty Marvel Masterworks, Doctor Strange, Volume 1. But before we go any further... Who are we going to thank? Who are we going to thank? David Gabriel and the people at Marvel. Yes. So, um... We are back talking about this. Uh, the Marvel has been printing these Mighty Marvel Masterworks. Uh, we've had Spider-Man. We've had the X-Men, the Avengers. Hulk. Hulk, Thor. We haven't reviewed Hulk yet, which we need to fix. We need to do that. Uh, and today we're talking about the Mar uh, Master of the Mystic Arts, Doctor Strange. And if you're new to this series, they are digest size mm -hmm. um, for the, the youths that uh, marketed towards the youths. Yes, but anybody can get them. You have both. Of, we'll look at uh, them a little bit closer here in a minute. But let's go ahead and start talking about this uh, particular era of Marvel Comics because this is a unique take on a superhero for the time. Yep, just like all the other Mighty Marvel Mess works, it's the very beginning of the comic line. And in Doctor Strange, he appeared in Strange Tales where, like, who appears on, like, every cover? The Human Torch. Yeah, the Human um, Torch. Almost <laughs> every, star. like, every single story collected in here, along with Doctor Strange, is something about the Human Torch. Well, the sto what? those stories aren't collected, just the covers. The covers. Yeah, because the covers. Doctor Strange didn't, fe he wasn't featured on a cover because he wasn't popular enough. Um, so what is collected in here, Lydia? What does Volume 1 collect? Volume 1 collects issues 110 through 111, then it takes a short little break and collects issues 114 through 129. Of Strange Tales. Mm -hmm. So this was an anthology magazine, comic book at the time, and it did feature Johnny Storm, and they were trying to find another character. So that's where they introduced the character of Dr. Stephen Strange. Boy, how did they introduce him? They are terrific promoters of their own content on the first page, right? Yeah. <laughs> like it is. Well, like... and there were five pages that he was in. Him and uh, Nightmare are introduced in the first issue, mm -hmm. the 110, uh, and then we get to meet uh, his... Probably the big arch nemesis through most of this. And who is that, Alicia? Baron Mordo. Baron Mordo. That's right. Uh, <laughs> so, give me a little bit of the background. Because in 115, keep, was it eight, 115? That is only eight pages long. We finally get to see his origin. 114, actually. Did you actually? Was it really? Because it took it a break. Because it took a break. And yeah. then it was like... Hey, since this is popular, we took a break. We need to restart this and tell you the origin. All right, give me a brief synopsis of the origin, lady. Basically, Doctor Strange used to be a very kind of egotistical, selfish doctor. Don't know his name what kind of doctor was he? Um, he was a medical doctor. Well, yes, but what what did he specify? Surgeon. In? Surgeon, mm -hmm. correct. Um, and basically, he got into. Uh, I'm pretty sure, like, he got injured. And a car accident. Car accident. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and like he couldn't work as a surgeon anymore because of like the injuries. What did it affect, Alicia? His hands. His hands. He can't and do what, puppets anymore. And what do you need to do surgery? Your hands, because like if you can't move your hands that well, well, chances are the person will most likely die. He could have used his feet, right, Alicia? He could have learned to cut people with feet. But instead, Alicia, who? Uh, what did he go learn? Who did he seek out? He he seeked out the Ancient One. Mm -hmm. The Ancient One. And what did the Ancient One teach Dr. Stephen Strange? Black magic, like the Black Arts. The Black Arts. All right. Alicia, what... Uh, how do I put this? Who else was a pupil of the Ancient One? Baron Mordo. Baron Mordo. So what made Baron Mordo become evil... What, what made him not follow the ways of the Ancient One? Because he wanted to become him. Like, he yeah. wanted to be... He wanted to be the new master of the Mystic Arts? Yeah, he wanted to be all-powerful, the okay. most powerful person. Yeah, that happens sometimes to us. Sometimes we get a little greedy and humans just want to be the most powerful black magic arts user. And then instead, you know, we make videos in our basement. So, what do you all think was 
fun about this. I I liked how when he was transporting in his spiritual form all around, his ethereal form, like he did that a lot. I, I yeah, I thought it was fun to kind of pretend like that it was a thing that you like is possible and you can do. And I thought it was hilarious how he used that in a very simple manner when he was trapped by uh, Mordo Mm -hmm. and in that jar thing. And he just like, oh, I'll just slip through the whole earth and pop out on the other side to the ancient one. That's comic book science. (laughs) That's awesome. um, What were you going to say, sweetie? Like, yeah, I also found it a little bit of a stretch that, I mean, besides that one issue, the, like, uh, never again does any like he doesn't really get into any danger when his body's left alone like oh yeah besides that one issue with bear and and stuff uh yeah like basically he never really gets into any trouble nobody goes after his body yeah like it's like oh no it's dr strange he did did he (laughs) towards the beginning of this he does do a lot of -of out-of-body experiences Mm -hmm. and Uh, i think that with mordo that was a Good issue. That was a good battle between the mm-hmm. two of them. By the hoary host of Hogoth. Did you all have any favorite magic spells? Alicia? Any of his spells? Did he No? I have Agamotto? Nothing. Nothing. Okay. What uh Lydia? No? Yes? No. no. What about the dialogue itself? Did you was it did you it, like it? It was pretty easy to follow. Even oh. there was like a lot of spells in it though. It was a lot of spells. Yeah. yeah. There were people I remember uh people some moms probably thought that the spells were real. They were real black magic spells, and Stan Lee was like, no, I just made these up in my head. What are you, crazy? But, um, what about you, Lydia? Dialogue itself? Yeah, like, I agree with Lacey, that's pretty easy. And I do find it funny, like, all the little magic spells that he uses. Mm-hmm. Like, throughout the book, and just, like, in general, yeah, like, I like the dialogue. You did? And it's all old school, right? Mm-hmm. So, it, to me, it's, like, has a connotation of innocence that everything has to be spelled out and explained so it's more it's not necessarily more of a simple story but Mm -hmm. I I don't know yeah okay Um, this I think out of all the books we've read so far is probably the most interesting and unique one because yeah, you're not so dealing true. with a guy that got bitten by a radioactive spider and he's now has superpowers you're not dealing with a guy that got hit by a a bomb and now he's a big hulking menace Uh, you're dealing with a guy that's a wizard and he knows magic spells and he's kind of not connected to the entire Marvel Universe for a long time like there you know when we read Avengers when we read like uh, Spider-Man right off the bat it was a Fantastic Four in the first issue in this do you remember the only other Marvel character that appeared Thor Thor. And, but was it really Thor? And Loki. Right. It was more of a Loki story. Yeah, like, yeah. Thor's just passing he's by like, like oh, I wonder like, what that was. <laughs> it's me. <laughs> Maybe Strange. I'll find out one day. <laughs> yeah, it's more of a Loki like trying to manipulate Doctor Strange. Mm-hmm. Now, there are other characters that appear in here like that don't... Like, Clea is not even named. She's not named until a little bit later. And she appears with Dora Mamu. Uh, Nightmare, who plays a bigger role throughout his series later on, but it's mainly Baron Mordo through these stories here. Then there's one young lady that you asked me about. Uh, Victoria. Victoria Bentley. So she appears, and you had a good question. You were, you know, because it seems like the story was setting her up for more. Yeah, because, like, she apparently came from, like, a sort of lineage of black art magic users. And that's why he could like reach her with his psychic thoughts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's like, oh, who's this new character? And then she never appears. She she does come back, but it's after uh, Steve Ditko left. So, let's look at the artwork, and then we're going to come back and talk about it, and give our final thoughts. Alright, Alicia, take us through this. Alright, so, this one is drawn by Michael Cho, this cover, Mm -hmm. and this one is drawn by Steve Ditko. Right, okay, so... Which this... one is the standard cover? This one is the standard one, and this is the direct market. That's right. So the direct market is also limited. Yeah, and and this one is ava- available everywhere. Hey, my girl is learning, all right. What else is different? The backs are different. I and mean, the, the spine, spines. The mm-hmm. spines and the backs here. You can Let's look at the backs. So this part is different, like... See how it's like this one's brownish gold, like, Mm -hmm. and this one doesn't have any outline. This one here says this is a volume nine of a special limited run. Yeah, and this one has 
a purple line. A purple line, yeah. Uh, both books do retail for $15.99. Let's take a quick look at the artwork. All right, so there's all the credits. Let's look at the first issue. Honestly, he looks pretty, like, he looks older in the first issues. And he also always has his eyes closed in the first issues. Yeah, so does Baron Mordo. I noticed that. And he's got his leopard gloves in the first. And oh, then I love the ears. leopard gloves. Maybe maybe it was too much for Steve Ditko to draw, and he kind of simplified it a little well, bit. Well, so who brought it back? Um, it comes back later. Oh, and there's Victoria? Yep, Victoria Bentley, who will play a bigger role later on. Uh, but you're right. Steve Ditko did draw him a little bit older. Probably a guy in his 50s. Looks a little bit like this gentleman known Vin as Vincent Price. Uh, but if you look later on when the character becomes more popular and he starts getting more than five pages a book, you know, he looks a little bit younger. He looks more like a guy in his 40s than his 50s. Mm -hmm. Not that that's that big of a difference now that I'm getting closer to that 5 <laughs> But, um, yeah, you know, Steve Ditko. This is the same guy that drew Spider-Man. Alicia, do you think this is different than Spider-Man? Yeah, because it has, like, more magic elements to more it. More magic. Look at that. You don't see pictures like that in Spider-Man. You don't, you don't see colors. You don't see skylines like that in Spidey. Um, Spidey. Spidey, that's what we call him. There's the issue with Loki right there. Um, Lydia, what else did you want to add? What did you think about the artwork? I thought it was pretty good. Like, um, I don't honestly like Doctor Strange's face that much. Like, just in general, there's something specifically wrong with it. Mm -hmm. It's just, I don't know. I just don't like his face that much. He's older. He's an older man. He's not as cute as uh, handsome Peter Parker. <laughs> I get it. Or Peter Palmer, Alicia. The mask murderer. <laughs> Um, yes, but you can see the Strange Tales covers always feature the Human Torch until Nick Fury takes over Strange Tales. And Doctor Strange gets a little bit of a... Yeah, like, and, uh, one of the issues, Doctor Strange isn't there at all, because, like, oh, it's such a big, fantastical event that we can't even fit Doctor Strange on here. <laughs> was, was it the one where, where Torch, the Human Torch meets Iceman? I think it was. No, it wasn't. I, I forgot which one. Yeah, I love the Storm and Mood issue you're right this is, this is a good one uh there's the ancient one uh there as far as extras there's not really that many extras we have some original pages here by steve ditko and then this wonderful page right here uh this is an unused pinup of dr strange and then all the other marvel masterworks or mighty marvel masterworks mm -hmm. all right let's get back and give our final thoughts so girls which uh story or stories did you all enjoy the most i liked the nightmare ones because it has like more story to it, so like, like Nightmare was invading people's dreams, mm -hmm. and Doctor Strange had to save them. And in the first issue, issue, it was a nightmare one, and it turns out the person who was getting invaded by Nightmare was actually bad. That was the twist. That was the very first issue. Mm -hmm. What about you, Lydia? What was your favorite? I like the Dormo stories because like, uh, they're just kind of weird and just different i guess mm -hmm. like especially since i don't know it's just like this kind of weird world with a bunch of weird creatures in it oh baby wait until you see the uh the designs of eternity that's when steve ditko really really goes crazy it, with his art yeah this is a cool character because they had so much freedom just to yeah. do like weird things yeah because it's magic it could be anything it's different than drawing spider-man in, in new york yeah right. yeah like yeah. um if Dormu showed up in Spider-Man. I don't think that would make any sense at all. Well, uh, there's a Spider-Man annual number two that features. <laughs> but anyway, okay. Wait, oh, wait, what about the real world? You got a question about something in the real oh, yeah. world, though. Yeah, what, yeah. What, what was your question about one of the stories? In the, well, the last issue collected, there's uh, this uh, character named Tim Boro and... Uh, like a bunch of scientists are like, we don't believe Doctor Strange because uh, we don't believe in magic. We're gonna prove him wrong, and they have the statue, and they said specifically it was from Peru. Represent. <laughs> and in one of the flashbacks, it's like only like one picture, but it's like all oh, these people worshipped him, and like I said, the statue is from Peru, and everybody worshiping uh, Timboro was white. Well. Scientifically speaking, uh, 
That could have been just the color mistake, honestly. Or maybe... <laughs> Scientifically maybe speaking. <laughs> maybe the colorist just didn't. Who at the time, you know, the colors weren't credited at the time. Sometimes it was Steve Ditko. Sometimes maybe the colorist didn't know that was a statue from Peru. Or, right, it could have been but that that's... they filled in the dialogue later, which is very the Marvel way of doing things, uh... right? Like, maybe they just thought it was a bunch of people worshipping a statue. It could have been somewhere in Europe or something. Or... There's the case that the colors had never seen Peru. Keep in mind, this was the age before the internet. We had encyclopedias to go and look and research. And sometimes when you're in the middle of, you know, a deadline, you got to rush it out. And I'm sure probably most people at the time that were reading this going, hey, wait a minute, Peruvians don't look anything like that. But nice catch, kid. I didn't even catch that the three times I've read this recently. Uh, overall, what did you all think of this? Out of ten... Alicia, what do you give this book out of 10? I give it an 8.5 out of 10. I actually liked it more than the other ones because it, the issues had like more story to them. And they were oh, quick to and, read. And, yeah, yeah, and they were actually shorter. Yeah, 5 pages, 8 pages, 10 pages. What about you, Lydia? I give it an 8.5 too because wow, I... Wow, y'all really like Doctor uh, Strange. Yeah, like I think the stories are a lot more fun than the other ones. Because, like, well, yes, you can have some weird things in the other ones. Like, yeah. like uh, you know, Spider-Man doesn't go and fight Nightmare or anything. Well, he does later. But, yes, <laughs> at first he's fighting guys that or, have metal octopus arms yeah. or electric guys I guess, or Sandman. I guess it's more fun because nothing really has to make that much sense like uh, like you know obviously it has to make sense for the story but it doesn't have to be like constant uh background to all these characters like this is a scientist that accidentally i don't know oh uh, i see what you mean it's Tashi melanie i don't rate oh my gosh well all I'm right eight an eight okay Here. it's a solid rating because it's uh steve ditko <laughs> this <laughs> by far i think is my favorite steve ditko work and it gets better and better uh i agree with the girls this is eight and a half it still stands the test of time uh the dialogue less cringy than you know a lot of people have issues with dialogue from the silver age and i, I guess it can be hokey and it can be cringy but this yeah. seems like a norm yeah the guy is not very likable at first but you, he grows on you. Uh, but that's it. Thank you all so much for joining us. Uh, thank you again to Marvel and David Gabriel for sending us copies of these books. We, we will be doing more because we have a lot of fun. The family that reads together stays together. Is that what we say? Something like that. Anything else, girls? Stay minty. That was not excited enough. <laughs> Stay minty. Hit that like button.